Faith Lutheran Mission Church. My name is Nick Kensler, pastor here at the church. Good morning to everyone sitting in our pews. Good morning to everyone who is watching us online. A couple of announcements for today. Uh, first off, um, the Lemoyne found a dollar bill on the floor there, so if you lost a lot of dollar bill, well, it's in the church kitty now. So don't be pulling anything out of the baskets. <laughs> Uh, render unto Caesar, and this is a render unto God, what is due God, God, God's God. <coughs> Coming up this Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. is our Thanksgiving Eve service. So, if you don't have it on the calendar, put it on now. It's coming up this Wednesday. Thanksgiving Eve, our service is at 7 p.m. And after the service, we're heading to High Fellowship, and there's a lot of people signed up downstairs with some goodies. So, if you don't even want to come up and hear me preach on Wednesday, and you don't want to come to at least hear the choir, at least come and get some pie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, at least come to hear the choir and, and uh, have some pie. You know, and I'll throw myself in there for a little something. <laughs> there we go. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Next, a week from today, is our new member Sunday. So, if I, anybody else is still interested, it's not too late. Come on up, let's talk about if you're not a part of the family, officially a part of the family here at the church. Uh, come up and see me. We can get you signed up. That includes everyone who's anyone who's watching us online. We can do remote members as well. That's a week from today for our new member Sunday. Now, um, coming up into December, actually even before December, a week from uh, a Wednesday is going to be yeah Christmas decorations. Yep, got to get ready. Get into the spirit of it all. So on the uh, 28th, right here at church, we're going to be meeting at uh, 5 or 5.30, Chuck? 5.30. 5.30. 5.30. And uh, more people we have to help decorate the place, the quicker it goes. And Chuck and Kim have graciously offered to supply pizza and brownies afterwards, too. So there you go. You got some more incentive. We're Lutherans, so yeah, food, coffee is always a good incentive for us, right? That will be a week from Wednesday on the 28th meeting here at 5.30. What else do we got on here? Advent is coming up then after that, December 2nd. Okay? Kind of another weird year where not the first Sunday after Thanksgiving is the start of uh, Advent. It's going to be the Sunday following after that. So December 2nd we'll be starting Advent. We'll have the wreath up front. We'll have everything decorated. And we'll start getting our hearts and minds in preparation with what Advent is all about in the preparation of our hearts and minds for the celebration of the coming of our Lord Jesus and His birth. That will be starting on December 2nd. Operation Christmas Child Boxes. Today is the last day, folks. Yeah, because I've got to bring them all over to, the, to our Peace Lutheran Church tomorrow, which is going to be distributing them, and the truck's coming to pick it up at, at noon. So today's the last day dropping off. Right now, we are officially at 132 boxes. So we got close. Our goal was 150, but maybe there's still some people who might bring them in yet today. That's okay, but today is the last day for the collection of those boxes. Whew. Almost there. Got one more. Christmas coming up, so what do you think of Christmas? You think of decorations, and when you think of decorations for Christmas, you think poinsettias, or poinsettias, depending on how you want to pronounce them, potato, potato. But we every year have the poinsettias sign up uh, downstairs, $10 each if you would like that poinsettia. In memory of someone, there's a uh, line to the right of your sign up that will tell you that who can, that you might have in mind for a memory of it, and we will post that in the bulletins. So. Sign up downstairs, $10 each for the poinsettias, and then we'll just bring them all up here around the altar and up front uh, through the Christmas season, the last week of Christmas. Then, 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 please remember to take them home then afterwards. Because I don't want to have to throw those things out because they're so pretty. All right, I think that is all I have. Let's go into uh, preparing our hearts and minds for a time of worship here. Kayla's going to bring us into the presence of the Lord, and then we'll go into our first hymn.
working out of the green hymnal today. Our opening hymn is for the beauty of the earth, number 561, 561. Please rise as you are able.
in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Today's psalm is found on pages 220 and 221 in the Green Hymnal, Psalm 16. 
I will read the first verse and you can respond. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their vibrations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The second lesson today is from the 10th chapter of Hebrews, verses 11 through 25. Under the Old Covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. But our high priest offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins, good for all time. Then he sat down in the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering he forever made perfect those who are being made holy. And the Holy Spirit also testifies that this is so. For he says, This is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he says, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. And when sins have been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Here ends the reading of the lessons. Please rise as you're able for the gospel. Alleluia. Glory to you, O Lord. Starting in verse 1. As Jesus was leaving the temple that day, one of his disciples said, Teacher, look at these magnificent buildings. Look at the impressive stones in the walls. Jesus replied, Yes, look at these great buildings. But they will be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of another. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives across the valley from the, the temple. Peter, James, and John, and Andrew came to him privately and asked him, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to be fulfilled? And Jesus replied, Don't let anyone mislead you. 
For many will come in my name claiming, I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in many parts of the world as well as famines. But this is only the first of the birth pains, with more to come. When these things begin to happen, watch out. You will be handed over to the local councils and beaten in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be an opportunity to tell them about me. For the good news must first be preached to all nations. But when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. Just say what God tells you at that time. For it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child, and children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And everyone will hate you because you are my followers. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. In our Gospel text for this morning, Jesus wanted the disciples to focus their attention not on the physical things of the world around them that they could see and which would soon disappear, but rather on spiritual things which were the words spoken by Jesus that would last for eternity. The Bible tells us in the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 16, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Church, we need to remember that God's word is still powerful in our hearts and in our lives today. And that's the reason we gather together for worship and our Bible studies so that we can let God's will dwell within us richly. This is exactly what Jesus wanted his disciples to realize and understand. So he proclaims in verse 10 from our gospel text, for the good news must first be preached to all nations. What Jesus is saying to the disciples and us that no matter what he was going to face and no matter what the disciples would face and even what we would face, the gospel must be preached. And that gospel message hasn't changed from when the first disciples heard it to the modern day disciples of all of us. So when I studied this passage from Mark's Gospel over the past week, my focus was not so much that the text was about the end times, but rather what Jesus is emphasizing. It's about the Gospel. In our Gospel text for today, we're going to see three reasons from Jesus why the gospel must be preached. The first reason is because Jesus says there will be deceivers. Verse 3 tells us that Jesus and the team were heading up to the Mount of Olives. And on the Mount of Olives, they were by themselves in order that Jesus might speak very personally with all of the disciples. And Jesus starts 
with a warning. In verse 5, and he says, don't let anyone mislead you. The Greek word used here for that word mislead is the word planapo, which means to cause, to wander, or go astray. Now Jesus said this for a very good reason. In accordance with the chronological timing of Mark chapter 13, in less than a week, Jesus would be put to death by crucifixion on the cross. And then, people would then try to come and plan doubt in the disciples' minds. So Jesus tells the disciples in verse 5, don't let anyone mislead you. Jesus, Jesus even adds this in verse 6, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. Jesus is saying that there would be many people claiming to be the Messiah. And there would be false teachers who would put themselves in the place of Christ and claim they could offer salvation. And many people would follow them. So in verse 9, Jesus warns once again, when these things begin to happen, watch out. Jesus told his disciples thousands of years ago that there would be many deceivers. And Jesus is giving his present day disciples the same warning. Don't let anyone mislead you. And when these things begin to happen, watch out. Today, God's message is still the same. The gospel must be preached because there are many deceivers in the world. Over the course of history, we have seen many deceivers come and go. Yet, yet what happens? The truth of God's word still stands. Now some have detracted from the glory of God. And some have even put themselves in the place of Christ. So Jesus warns, don't let anyone mislead you. Going back a few years, some of you may remember Jim Jones, who had people follow him even out of the country to South America. David Koresh led people to Texas. Sun Myung Moon called himself Christ, and even stated, I am the Messiah. Now, Moon was actually convicted of tax fraud and eventually left the country because of the indictments of the U.S. federal court. Yet the crazy thing is, even though Sun Myung Moon died a couple of years ago, he still has thousands of followers who look to him as a Messiah. The Moonies, as they were called, and are still called, still have an active following on their website even today. And the list goes on. Many people are misled. How and why does this happen? Now, Scripture gives a pretty good Answer for this in the second book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 13 through 15. The Bible says this, These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves <laughs> as apostles of Christ. But I am not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So, it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. There are many deceivers. Even in our churches today. All too often, as of late, the gospel has been watered down and compromised. And because of this, way too many people are following these deceptions and without hearing and knowing the truth that Jesus wants people to hear. God's gospel must continue to be preached. 
Because the deceivers in this world today are still leading many people astray. Which brings us to the second reason why the gospel must be preached. And that is, there will be signs which will be revealed. Jesus says this in verses 7 through 8 from our gospel text. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in many parts of the world as well as famines. But this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Jesus was trying to prepare his disciples for the future that was soon to come. Now Jesus spoke these words about 35 years before <coughs> the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. And it was destroyed by the Romans in the year 70 AD. In that year, the temple was torn down and there was nothing left of it. The nation and kingdom of Israel had fallen to the nation and kingdom of Rome. So in the lifetime of these, of these disciples, most of them, they did see a kingdom against kingdom and a nation against nation. And these were the signs that Jesus told the disciples at that time to look for. Jesus also spoke of the signs of earthquakes and famines. And Jesus says that that these signs of nature are only the beginning. Jesus compares these signs to birth pains, which every mother knows is a very uncomfortable time. And Jesus says this because when the disciples came out of the temple, at the beginning of chapter 13, one of the disciples said, Teacher, look at those magnificent buildings. Look at the impressive stones in the walls. And Jesus replies in verse 2, they're not going to last. The only thing that would last were the words he had been speaking to them over the past three years. Jesus says these warnings to the disciples and to us, not to scare them or scare us, but rather to prepare them. And once the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed, the disciples began to understand more clearly these words from Jesus. Folks, there are still signs today. The birth pains that Jesus speaks of will be present and ongoing until our Lord returns. And the Bible reminds us of this truth in Romans chapter 8, verse 22, which tells us, For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Society today has lost many moral values. And sin and wickedness are on the increase. So, so the words of Jesus become even more important to the disciples of today. <clears throat> Don't let anyone mislead you. And Jesus also says, when these things happen, begin to happen, watch out. The devil is constantly trying to deceive us and cause us to wander and go astray from what God's word tells us. Jesus even warns of this when he says this in Matthew chapter 24, verses 10 through 12. And many will turn away and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people. Sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. There are many deceptions <clears throat> and signs today that remind us that the gospel must continue to be preached. 
So our Lord tells us to stand firm and be on our guard. So this brings us to the third reason that the gospel must be preached, and that is there will be deliverance. <clears throat> the words of Jesus and the truths he proclaimed were not uh, liked very much by the Jewish leaders. So Jesus tells his disciples that because of their commitment to follow him, they also would be hated. And so Jesus says this in verse 9, When these things begin to happen, watch out. You will be handed over to the local councils <coughs> in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. Church tradition says that John, who wrote the fourth gospel, was the only disciple who died a natural death. All of the other disciples were handed over to councils and beaten by government officials and flogged in the synagogues. However, God says that there was a purpose for this. So Jesus tells the disciples in the last part of verse 9, but this will be an opportunity to tell them about me. The disciples' lives were given up for the sake of the Savior. Yet, what happened? Jesus' disciples got to be before kings and governors and councils to testify about the gospel truths. The Apostle Paul ended his life in a prison in Rome. Yet he too had an opportunity to testify to governors, rulers, and even Caesar himself that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Paul and the disciples came to realize that the gospel must be preached. Because God had delivered them <clears throat> And he had delivered them to deliver that message. And Jesus reassures the disciples that they don't need to worry about what to say when they were standing on trial before those government officials. <clears throat> and so he promises them in verse 11, but when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. <clears throat> Just say what God tells you at that time. For it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells his followers not, not to worry when they get arrested or what they might say. And that they shouldn't worry about hiring a lawyer for their defense. Jesus, Jesus reminds them that God is with them and that he would deliver them. <clears throat> Folks, remember, remember that it is at these times when we may be feeling we are <coughs> on trial. When we're just defending the gospel, and we can we can hold to that promise of God close to our hearts. Church, you can know, you can know that the Holy Spirit will be right there with you during that time, and we'll provide you, too, with all the words that need to be spoken. And it's for the same reason. For it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. God will deliver you, too. <clears throat> and that's a promise from our Lord and Savior. And so, the gospel must be preached, must be continuing to be preached. That's because there are many deceivers who are twisting and distorting God's word of truth and misleading people everywhere. The gospel must also continue to be preached because of all the signs which around us which point us ever closer to that day when the Lord will return once again to bring all of his people home. And the gospel must continue to be preached 
because of the promise of his deliverance to all those people, everyone who believes in the saving grace, which is through his son Jesus, because of his willing sacrifice on the cross for our sins. And it is because of that deliverance from sin that we are going to be the deliverers of this message of hope, which is the good news that we call the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has delivered us so that we can deliver his message, his powerful message of promise and hope to a world that needs it very, very much. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your holy word that we call the gospel. We thank you for all the truths that are in the Bible, and we hold them dear to our hearts as the world around us tries to deceive us with misconceptions and lies. Father God, give us the strength and guidance so that we can be on our guard and stand strong upon the truths of your holy word. We pray this in the holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is Lead On, O King Eternal. Still working out of the Greek hymnal yet. Number 495.
pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we pray for this church as, as we move forward, getting into our a time of thanksgiving where we are just thankful for the blessings you have given us, Lord. We are thankful and also included for sending your son, Jesus, to save us from our sins. Lord, you have blessed us. Lord, let us remember our thankfulness this Wednesday and for every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we also ask you to ignite within us a fire to, to, to tell people why we are thankful and why, why you have changed our lives and, and why the gospel is such a blessing and why we must continue to preach it. Lord, ignite us. Ignite us with the fire of your Holy Spirit to continue to preach that truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, as a, as a church, we claim to follow you. And everything that we do and say is in accordance with that. And what we're also going to do as a church, Lord, is to pray for this nation. Because this nation has turned away from you, Lord, and gone its own way. And so, Lord, we, we are going to pray for this nation, that we turn back to you, Lord. We pray for these our nation's leaders who are in office now, Lord, that they make their decisions in accordance to your will. Lord, we also pray for the, the leaders who will be coming into Congress and, and local uh, city councils and school boards as well, Lord. We pray that they make their decisions in accordance to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Your mercy. Your mercy. Lord, we pray for all those soldiers that are fighting for those freedoms that we have here. Protect them, Lord. Keep them safe. Lord, then we ask you, we ask you to bring them home and reunite them with their families. And then, as a nation, Lord, we need to help them. We need to stand by them as they stood by for us, Lord, with everything that they need to transition back into society. Help us, Lord, to remember that. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 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 Lord, we pray for everyone who is traveling this week. We pray for safe travels, for, for everyone who is going out to visit loved ones during this, this holiday time. Lord, we also pray for all those people who are out on the, on the streets protecting us and serving us, law enforcement personnel, fire department personnel, ambulance personnel, <laughs> people who are in emergency rooms. They're all there to, <coughs> to serve us and help us, Lord. And we don't appreciate that. Lord, help us as a community to remember that they are out there serving us and putting their lives on the line for us, Lord. So help us to remember to continue to pray for them and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, this can be a tough time for many people as well as we go into the holidays because there's lots of loved ones at this time of year. And as much as they want to remember and be thankful, Lord, and, and many times they're thankful that they are with you, Lord. <coughs> they're still alone. And so, Lord, we ask you, ask you to come to all those who are in mourning for people they've lost and during this holiday season, Lord. Give them your peace. <coughs> Touch them, Lord. Have them remember what that hope is and what the peace is and the promise that is within you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. <coughs> Lord, we also pray for all of those people who are on our hearts in need of your healing touch. And that's not only physical healing, Lord. There's many who need a spiritual touch, healing of, of your Jehovah Rapha, and healing in minds and hearts. Lord, please come down. Bring your healing to all those who are on our hearts and minds at this time. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Lord, we also want to pray for all those soldiers who are fighting on the front lines for your gospel truth. Many of them are far away from families, but continuing to preach the gospel, Lord, that you set it on their hearts, Lord, and they're being obedient to that. Lord, protect them. Keep them safe. Protect them from any kind of human evil. Protect them from the darts of Satan. Lord, protect them on their travels as they go from town to town. And Lord, we ask that you can provide them with the resources that they need to do those ministries you've called them to. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 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 If there's anyone who has any prayers that would like to make it this time, please go ahead and say them. Into your hands, O oh Lord, 
and commit all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy of your Son, <clears throat> Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also, also with you. you. Please share the peace of God with one another. Peace. 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 Peace.
with joy and thanksgiving, what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord.
Let us pray. I may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the benediction. <laughs> Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and give you his everlasting strength and peace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Kids, head on down for uh, Sunday school and confirmation. The rest of us children of God have got one more hymn to sing. Still working out of the green hymnal yet. Praise the Lord, O heaven. <laughs> Uh, number five four zero. <laughs>